Hi, this is the great Johannes speaking. Today I was thinking about the theory of evolution and if there is really no argument against it. I know, I know, you're going to think I'm crazy, uneducated and unscientific, but if you would hear me out, there is an argument and it's really good. It goes as follows. Uh, there are several ways that this reality, that life, could have come into being. Uh, creation theory, that's the religious idea of a uh, divine being that was already there prior to the creation, creating everything. Okay. Uh, and then there is the theory of evolution, which is really two things. It is the process of natural selection and then the evolution through that selection. So it's evolution through se selection. Evolution theory is often confused with a third thing, which is randomness, random events. A lot of religious people will use the, uh, the argument of randomness to say that, well, evolution can't be true because what are the odds? What are the odds that my DNA was thrown together at random? They say it's a chance of 1 in 700, 600 billion, who knows? Uh, and so they try to use the randomness argument against evolution, and I know this is not a valid argument. The argument, for example, that if a tornado would run through a scrapyard and somehow put together a Boeing, they say, well, the chance is one in a gazillion billion that that would ever happen, right? Uh, yet the theory of evolution is superior to the, this argument of randomness, namely that in, in evolution, it is precisely the point that something can take billions of years, right? So they say that the universe is uh, 13.62 billion years old, and then all of a sudden, this very small chance of life coming into being through a somewhat random event, random event is not as impossible as the opponents of evolution say. However, uh, next to these three points, creation, randomness, and evolution, there is a fourth one that we don't talk about. And that is trial and error. Trial and error differs from both evolution and from randomness. Trial and error clearly is not random. Trial and error means uh, you start with little knowledge. You don't really know what you're doing. You try stuff out. You discover that something works. And now you move on to the next thing and the next thing. And so you start putting things together that work based on your learning ability. Basically, you're learning on the job to do how to, to figure out how to do something right or not. Trial and error also differs from evolution. That is because in evolution, it is evolution theory says that evolution is basically agnostic. Natural selection is agnostic. Meaning that in evolution theory, there is no mind at work trying to sculpt or design things in a certain way at all. In in evolution, through the process of natural selection, the idea is that individual atomic actors like atoms, molecules, uh, uh, DNA, genes, but also individual people make their decisions. And as a consequence of this collective decision making uh, you know, or randomness, uh, as a result of that, we, we end up having our specific DNA, for example, or we end up having the different life forms we see in the world that is all based on individual actors. <clears throat> One might summarize this belief as universal Darwinism, is to believe that atomic units operate at the base level. That's why they call individuals individuals. It comes from something being indivisible. It cannot be smaller than one. A human being cut in half is a dead, is dead. So that doesn't work. So the individual that cannot be divided any further is the base note or the root note of this symphony, so to speak. This is what scientists tend to believe nowadays. Uh, uh, also proponents of a sort of Marxist materialism also buy into this. And yet I feel there is an alternative explanation for our reality that is not based on evolution, not on randomness, and not on crea creation from nothing, but rather based on the idea of trial and error. Uh, I believe that not only trial and error can explain uh, life on Earth, but that through a process of trial and error, life on Earth would have, would have arrived far quicker than through evolution and would not require 
13.62 billion years, but perhaps several million or several hundred thousand years or even quicker than that. And let me explain, explain how this might be possible. It comes down first to the root assumption of all that is science. The science people say that uh, everything in, in existence in the universe is matter, physical matter, in motion. Perhaps motion also represents energy. So there's matter and energy and that's it. What they mean to say is there's no mind at work. They even say that your mind, the one you think you have in your head, is just a byproduct of mechanical biological processes. In other words, you just think you have a free will, you think you have a mind, you think you have a spirit and a soul, and you think you're thinking, but you don't really do any of these things. That's what the scientists say. They say that mind must be, or consciousness must be a, a byproduct of mechanical operations of the biological system that were just thrown together since the Big Bang at random over 13.62 billion years uh, through this process of natural selection. Here's where I differ in opinion because the scientific worldview that I just tried to explain uh, assumes that things that come from nothing must be material things, must be matter in motion. As though, but wait a minute, wait a minute. If you assume, and this is an assumption, if you assume that a material universe, a material reality can come from nothing, material meaning as real as this microphone is made of uh, iron and plastics and so on and other materials, that a material universe can come from nothing. Wait a minute. Then we are ignoring something. We are forgetting something. We are forgetting that if a material physical universe can come from nothing, then we must also assume that a mental universe, a mind, can also come from nothing. And why wouldn't it? If physical matter can come from nothing, as the scientists say, then why wouldn't a thinking mind, non-physical, an immaterial mind, also be able to come from nothing? We now have to compare these two possibilities and see which one is most likely, if it can be determined at all, and I think so. You see, the difference now between trial and error and evolution was that in trial of error there's a mind at work and the mind has both an intelligence and a memory. Memory plus intelligence greatly speeds up random events, random events if you can influence them. Instead of having to wait for uh, my genes to be thrown together in a way that human beings can come into existence after billions of years of evolution on Earth, through a process of trial and error, you might achieve the same result far, far quicker. You might realize that you have a memory and a mind, an intelligence and a memory at work, in order to now, starting from nothing, but now to steer to learn on the job and to steer results toward an imagined goal, right? I often compare this idea of trial and error to what goes on on github.com. Github.com didn't wait for the code to magically appear. The people who put code on GitHub, they can, uh, multiple people can add code to the open source projects. They can uh, create revisions. They can create branches and forks. That means they can, so it, it looks a lot like evolution, but it's not. Because in evolution, there would not be programmers. Evolution happens without programmers, without a thinking mind adding anything to it. It is a random event that is stored or codified in, say, DNA or so. Whereas on GitHub, you have developers, programmers, consciously adding something to the software, to the open source software, consciously steering it to different goals. When they fork a project, it becomes, usually it receives a slightly different purpose. And so the purpose itself emerges from the collaboration of different programmers. But trial and error, therefore, presupposes the existence of a thinking intelligence, an intelligence with a memory. And this, in principle, should not be there. According to the Scientific worldview, the universe came into being from nothing as matter in motion, but without a thinking mind. So the scientists say everything is material. It's called, this ideology is called materialism, and it has something to do with Marxist materialism. Karl Marx 
uh, either adopted or coined this idea that everything is matter and motion. I think he adopted it from thinkers before him, way before him. Uh, we just happen to live in a timeline where we ended up embracing the idea of materialism without questioning it. That is probably because even when I was a teenage student and my physics teacher taught me that everything in existence is matter and motion and the laws of physics apply here and everywhere else, even at Betelgeuse, the star. And it took me a long time uh, to figure out that there is a flaw in this assumption. Namely, I already told you, if a physical universe can come from nothing, we must also investigate the possibility of a non-physical, mental, or immaterial universe coming from nothing. Meaning, could a thinking mind come from nothing without having a physical host, physical host yet? And could this, this thinking mind or multiple thinking minds start to collaborate through a process of trial and error to create our reality that now only appears to be physical, but is truly mental in origin, meaning that uh, the physical reality we perceive around us is actually codified in thought and not in matter. Could it be so? Could, could the universe, what we perceive as reality, could the whole thing perhaps be uh, a, a mental construct and not so much a physical construct? This would have some wide-ranging implications, namely that science as we know it, it would be false. It, would simply not be true. The formula E equals mc squared, for example, m, matter, mass, c squared, the speed of light, represents matter in motion. E equals matter in motion, energy or everything in existence in the world, the sum of all energy is just matter in motion. Um, it denies the possibility of thinking minds altering or modulating this formula. And the problem would be, would rest in the value for c, the speed of light, which is supposed to be a constant, but this has never been determined by science. Did you know that science simply proclaimed the speed of light to be a constant without ever actually proving it? In 2008, a committee convened in London, I forgot the name, but probably the Committee of uh, Metrologists, or the measurement people. The measurement people convened in 2008 in London and proclaimed the speed of light a fixed constant, they fixed it, they said this is the fixed value, this is what it is. Whereas before that, every four years that they convened and they registered the speed of light, every four years it was a slightly different value, meaning there was never any evidence to say that the speed of light is constant. And if the speed of light is not a provable constant, which it isn't, it's never been proven as a constant, then you have the problem because E equals mc squared then implies if that C is uh, modulating if it's changing then the value e is changing and that's impossible according to science you cannot suddenly have more energy in the universe and less energy at, other, at different times of the day that would be a miracle that would be religious almost impossible according to the physical sciences and yet i believe that if we investigate these two possibilities namely whether or not our universe is truly physical in origin with no my, mental origin or a mix of mental and physical, or purely mental in origin, meaning that the physical reality is a mental uh, fata morgana, a, mor mir a mirage, uh, an illusion. Okay, I see no evidence why, if you, if you already assume, if you are already comfortable believing that physical matter can come from nothing in the Big Bang as a, as a singular point value, the singularity. If you're already comfortable believing that, how come you can't believe that it's also possible for a mind to emerge from the nothingness and that this mind then starts thinking and has a memory, develops an intelligence through a process of trial and error rather than evolution. Mind you, for, I'll repeat, for trial and error, you require an intelligence with a memory in order to get things going, whereas in evolution, you don't need a mind and you don't need a memory. Okay, I see no reason, no evidence why a mind, a thinking mind, could not have come from nothing. If you believe that matter can come from nothing, why can't a thinking mind come from nothing? And here's my point. I lean toward this belief that the universe came into being from nothing, but as a thinking mind. I believe this because uh, the rate at which evolution or what we call evolution could take place, would be at a far accelerated pace 
compared to the material evolution. Material evolution would take 13.62 billion years to produce me and you, whereas through the trial and error process, you could have life on Earth in several thousands of years, or maybe even faster than that. That is because a thinking mind would be there at work, or multiple minds would be there at work, figuring this out, dreaming up the universe through a process of creative expression, imagining things, trying them out, seeing what works, what's, what sticks, and whatever sticks becomes the reality that we perceive now as physical. And because I think, also because of this, that a physical universe like ours from nothing indeed would have a chance of one in close to infinity, or let's just say one in infinity, we just happen to be living in this one, that's what science says. If my idea that the universe could come from a mental origin, if it is true, then here's the thing, the success rate would be far greater. The chance of a mind coming from nothing and then being able to think and dream up our reality through a process of trial and error would have a far greater success rate. Whereas um, physical universes that come from nothing, most of them collapse. They cannot come to fruition. They, they are not fertile. They collapse because they do not have the right constants at the start. They, they have the wrong laws of physics, laws that cause the universe to collapse rather than to grow on as ours does or appears to be doing. Whereas a mental universe from nothing could have the wrong thoughts, but having wrong thoughts does not self-destruct you. You can have the wrong thought and then another wrong thought and you have more wrong thoughts until you find something that works and you keep it. And then you, and then you build on that and sometimes even you will swap out the foundation for a new foundation. That is also possible. What I mean to say is that in a mental universe, an immaterial mental universe, the laws of physics can be changing and the constants are not constant. They too can be changing. And the change of these constants and laws in a mental universe are in no way fatal because it's all an illusion. See, it's a mental illusion. You can try something out. It doesn't work like your computer crashes. You reboot, you start over. All right. Whereas in a mental, uh, in a physical universe, the one that science propagates, if the laws and the constants would not be perfectly set as they are in order to allow this universe to exist, we would immediately collapse back into the nothingness and be gone. And a mental universe is far more resilient in this sense. It can withstand failures. It can, uh, it can have a rapid creation, meaning you go through trial and error rapidly, have rapid cycles, and very, very quickly come to an end result that would look closely to what we are experiencing today. So that's my argument against evolution, namely that the process of trial and error in a mental universe would be quicker and more successful with less failure than evolution in a material setting. So that's why I lean toward believing that Evolution, which relies on the assumption of materialism, may be false because materialism may be false. And I believe that a mental universe from nothing, which allows there to be a thinking mind at work, which we could call a god or multiple gods, I don't know. But this thinking mind from nothing, which we could call a god, could be at work designing with its mind our reality and this process where a mind comes from nothing just leads to far better, more frequent and quicker successes than the other way, the way that science says the material universe, which indeed would take 13 billion years and the chance of one in infinity of actually working. Whereas in a mental universe, you could dream up a universe like this in several weeks or even quicker.